Uh, it was Westview School you went to, and you just went there till you finished, until you quit. No, I just went there one year. Just there one year? Just one year, and then uh, I had to, the weather got bad, we had to quit going because we didn't have the clothes to go to go two or three miles. And, of course, back then, they didn't care whether you went to school or not. Yeah. If you went, if you went it's all right, and if you didn't, it's all right. Okay. And we just go when it's pretty weather, and then when it got bad weather, we quit. Did you just learn to read? And, and, and yeah, sorry. read and write and spell and arithmetic and stuff like that. And then uh, we went back to Westview one year, and then the next is on account of the water getting up so bad on the whole creek. Well, we stopped going to that school and started going to Mattingly School. It's a little further, but we didn't have to worry about getting back across. If it rained, we wouldn't get back across the creek. So it was on the same side of the creek yeah. you all were on. One time we went to school up at Westfield, and it come a big rain. And, of course, David knew the creek was up, and he started crying because he knowed he didn't know what we was going to do. Well, uh, Dad went down out the creek, and he cut a tree, let it fall across the creek. And he come on across, and him and, and uh, uh, Mr. Kuiper, uh, of course, his three kids go going to school up our two, but he was on the other side of the creek. And so Mr. Kuiper and Dad, they come on, walk, come on to Westview, and got us, and we got down there, so Dad would go back across the, that log, you know, and take one at a time to get us back across the creek. So your Dad kind of carried you across or kind of no, led you? No, we walked, we just walked, and he led us, you know, so we wouldn't fall or whatever, across all that log, the treetop, you know. <laughs> and you just had to hope it wasn't going to roll had, or anything. We had to go back across that treetop, walk and then, across that creek. And you had to do the same thing coming back that day, or? Oh, that, that's when we, we, he come and got us. They'd rain while we was at school that day. Oh, okay. And then we had to do so That's why David was so, so worried. So next day we didn't go to school. I was going to say, because if you were at home, you just wouldn't have gone. And then we started going to Mattingly. And of course, that was better then, because we didn't have to worry about the rain. We got home anyway. So that's where you pretty much learned to read and write, then mostly Mattingly. I was going to say, if you only went to school one year, you sure did well, because you read and write and do figures when you well, need to. Yeah. So. I started when I was... I was six years old, and I've been been seven in August. I think I done told you about that. Too. Yeah. So, um, what about clothes and things? Did you, you and your sisters have to wear each other's clothes as you got older a lot, or did you always, always get your own? Always. Swap. Them down. Oh, yeah, have to pass them down. Yeah. Did your mom make your clothes, or yeah, you she, all did too? She or? made her clothes. She'd buy the material, maybe have to give five cents a yard for it. <laughs> and she'd buy the clothes, and she made all her clothes, underwear and all. Oh, all of them, huh? Yeah. And you just had to buy your shoes then? Yeah, buy our shoes. That's all right. So that's something else. <laughs> then uh, I don't think it told me about the, the day we, when we got married. No, because I never well, got the whole deep the day, story. The day before we, uh, since on Monday, before we got married, I stripped, we, I helped Dad, we stripped the biker all day. And then uh, the next morning, then, of course, Hardy come over there, that's Buck's brother. He come over there, him and him and mom, we all got in a road wagon and had two seats laid across the wagon and the bed of the wagon, you know. So uh, Hardy and Mom, they sat on the front seat. Me and Buck sat on a, another plank behind them. And it was cold, of course, I guess it's about, I don't have any knife, four or five miles, I guess, we had to go. And it was cold, we had to start out early that morning. And I had a quilt to wrap around my legs so I wouldn't get so cold, you know. <laughs> And we went to Hardinsburg, went to the courthouse, got our license, and Mr. Durham, the, the man that we lived on the place for, of course, we went to his house and left the wagon and the team. I was belonged to him anyway. Yeah. So we left him there, went out of town. And so he said, well, I was going up with you. So he went to the courthouse with me. Mm -hmm. He said, well, no, wait. said, you don't have to get married here in the courthouse. And said, let's go on down to the preacher's house. So he took us, and we went on down to the preacher's house then went in and he married us. And uh, when he started to leave, well, Buck, he uh, gave the preacher five dollars. <laughs> of course, that's, that's what, probably all the money you had anyway. Yeah, that was he, a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, it was a high smart thing, you see. Yeah. But the day before, when I stripped the biker, well, he had to, he shredded corn, I think. That's what he done. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, and then we went on back home in the wagon. It went on over to Hardy's and stayed all night that night. That was our first night married. And, and um, the next, and then the next uh, week, on the next day, we had to move. You see, Buck's dad and mom had separated, and uh, so Papa he gave up what he wanted, 
and went to, to live with Franklin, his oldest son. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, went to live with him. And he just walked out of that house and he told Buck, says, you can have the rest of things. He left us a big hog to kill. We had a hog to kill. And uh, had all the fruit there. Mama said she didn't want nothing. She took off. She was living with her brother then. Her and the two girls was living with her brother. And she told us to take over things like it belonged to us. She didn't want nothing. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just took over everything. And when the, then we moved everything in another house at the bungalow. And we moved in there. Well, uh, well, the only thing we had to have to start housekeeping on was a sack of flour, and he bought an alarm clock. <laughs> and that's all we had to have. Right. I mean, we had chickens and eggs. We had a hog to kill. And we had all, every, just everything like they walked out and left it. <laughs> you just took and, over and, the Anthony family. Things, things yeah. The things we've got here now, a lot of still things we started out with housekeeping on. My goodness. It's like that cabinet, this table. And and about December, I guess, by then, December yeah. oh, 33 yeah. now. My goodness. So that's the way that started out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the first time you met any of the Anthonys or just so far back or do you remember just kind of when they showed up and you Well when we moved from the Brown from the from a, from a, one place there, the Brown place. And then we moved uh, on to the Durham place. And we moved to the Durham place at the at the bungalow. That was the first, and Mr. Athenim just lived, was down over the hill from us. And that's where we first met. Mm -hmm. first time meeting I, I was about, I'm about nine years old, I guess. About nine years old. So then it's just. So they were just our neighbors then until we yeah. got married. And you just kind of got to know the girls and the oh, boys yeah, and Franklin run, and all of them. We got around together and everything. Yeah. Because nah. we didn't run all this school. They'd, we'd go to their house and they'd come to our house. And one Sunday we'd go over there and the next Sunday they'd come down to our house. Then I guess so that's the way we got started. That's kind of how hardy then, well, I guess, when his wife died and he kind of took well, up she with Abby. Already, he, she was already dead before. Oh, for you even. Yeah. And, of course, Abby, she got to go with Hardy, and I got to go with him. So the two brothers would come down there to see us, two sisters, every Sunday. <laughs> you never courted anybody else? Uh, not really. Not really? No. Just kind of. No, there's another boy that, in school, Francis Roach. He, he tried to go with me, but I wouldn't have anything to do with him. He called me, uh, he wrote me a note, wrote me a letter one day, and uh, he told me, he said, I, you know, I said something was going on, but I didn't know. He said, I seen that Anthony boy, of course, Buck had a little married, he rode all the time. Mm -hmm. That's why he'd get around and ride that little mare, he'd come down home. But Sunday night, a Saturday night and Sunday evening, two times he'd ever come down home, he'd ride that little mare down there and put it, hitch it in the driveway in the barn. Uh -huh. And she'd stand there until he got ready to go. Uh -huh. And uh, she, he wrote to me, he said, yeah, he said, I seen that Anthony boy the other day, he said, going to town, I said he had a girl in behind him. And I uh, said, uh, of course, I know it wasn't so. Uh -huh. But that's what he told me, he tried to go, but I wouldn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, he tried to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you took up just pretty and much. That, and there's another old guy, he's old, he's, I don't know how old he was, Denny Stillwell. He tried to go with me. One time he wrote me a letter. I got a letter from him. He said uh, he wanted to come over and see, you know. Of course, he'd come over, I wouldn't have anything to do with him. He, he wanted to come over there. So I sat down and I answered that letter. And uh, he had been trying to come over and go with Sylvia Cundiff, and she wouldn't have anything to do with him. But I'd heard about him doing that, you know. So he called, he wrote that letter. So I sat down and answered that letter. And I told him, I said, well, I said, uh, Sylvia Cundiff is more your age. I said, why don't you go out and go with her or something like that, you know. And then down at the bottom, I said, uh, some loves one, some loves 20. I love one, and that's a plenty. B. B. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I told him. He never did, he never did try to go with me anymore. That's okay. If you could describe your mom with just one sentence, what would you say? Somebody just said, tell me what your mom was like. What would you say? Oh, you couldn't beat her. Good. She was a good woman. Just took care of her good family. Good mother, she took care of her family. She was a strong she person. Was, yeah, huh? she was, really was. Yeah. That's good. What about your dad? Same thing. Same thing. I got nothing against him either. Yeah. Good parents then. Good parents. That's good. Sure. Back in, of course, this was back when I was about, uh, oh, the time when the time us kids got seven or eight years old, we had to go to the fields and, and, and hope tobacco and chop out corn, hoe pickles, and work just all day, you know. You'd take a hose and a hoe and make the hand, cut part of the handle off, make a little hose for us to hoe with. 
Uh -huh. I'd have to go every day and, and, and dad, dad and rest him did and hold pickles. One time we was pouring pickles and pick, hold them all day. And I was just, well, my arm just got hurt so bad and I started crying. And dad won't know what's wrong with him. And I told him my, my head hurt. I don't know why I said my head hurt when my arms hurt. Mm -hmm. I told him my head hurt. He said, well, go on to the house. Well, uh, had to go through, had to roll them through a cornfield like they had to go on to the house. Had to pass another old house there that they said it was ghost is there, ghost. And I was afraid to go to the house by myself to pass, to pass that old house. So I got back out there in the cornfield and a little tree like laid down. I laid there until they quit to go in for I don't know if it was dinner or for at night, but anyway, I stayed there until they quit working. When they started out and come out, I come out of the cornfield. Boy, Dad liked to give me a whipping because I didn't go on to the house. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't tell him why I didn't go because I was afraid to face that old house. <laughs> You're too embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's something else. They tell tales like that. That's what they'll be the old different things people see around that house. And, of course, they scared me. Well, yeah, and you were only, what, eight or nine years old, yeah. so... Of course you believe that. Well, we'd have to go to the field. They all of us go to the field and drop out ones big enough. By the time I was seven or eight years old, I was with the field and chopped out corn and, and hold pickles or whatever we had to do. When did you start cooking? Well, Mom never would let us cook. She'd always do that herself. The only thing I ever she'd ever let us do, of course, I had to build a fire and a, a wood stove. And she had two. She'd have had two cows to milk, and I don't know why that Mom had to milk both them cows. Dad and David, they never did go big, and so Mom learned learned me and Abby how to milk. Well, we'd go with her one week. I'd go and milk the cow one week, and then the next week Abby had to go. We'd milk one cow apiece, and I don't know why the rest of them did. But uh, when Mom would start to the barn to milk, well, uh, she'd we'd have to build a fire and a wood stove. And they got a wood kitchen stove. And the uh, only thing, we'd have to cook a, corn, a pan of cornbread for supper. Of course, Mom would have enough other stuff left from dinner. All we'd have to have for supper would be our cornbread. Mm -hmm. And, and we'd, she'd put salt. Of course, as a meal, we'd always have to have her take the corn and shuck it and shell it off the cob and take it to a meal and have it ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, then that's what that cornbread. Well, you'd have to put salt and sodium both in it. So Mom would put the soda and salt in it and the milk. And all we'd have to do is just put the meal in, stir it up, and put it in a pan and put it in the oven to have a time she got back to have supper. And that's what we'd have to do. <laughs> so that's how you one, get your and one time, though, as I got older, I guess it's old. She never would let us, they kind of bad, they learned us to do anything. But my oldest sister, you know, when she moved from Owensburg, about a mile and a half from where we lived, well, uh, I'd go to her house, and boy, she'd put me at work doing things. So one day, she went out and killed two or three chickens. Had to, of course, she raised chickens to fry. And she killed it, she said, she said now, I said, you're going to learn to cut chickens up. I said, oh, I don't know how. She said, you won't learn no younger. I said, you're going to learn. So she gave me a butcher knife and gave me a chicken. Of course, we picked it, you know, and cut it, and had it fixed to cut it. While we sat down there, she'd cut off a leg, but I'd cut off a leg. And she learned me how to cut up a chicken. Well, then she had learned me how to, to uh, cook different things, you know. Uh -huh. and, and if it wasn't that, I wouldn't know nothing when we got married. Mom would always want to do it herself. Before we got, before we got married one day, we did run out of meal. Had to have biscuits for supper. So my mom said, well, you get the stove hot and have the stove hot. She said, I'll fix the biscuits soon come in. It won't take long to fix them, she said. I said, well, I can make them. She never did learn me how to do it. Oh, she said, no, you say go. She said, I'll cook the biscuits with your so as she left, I run in the kitchen. I got washed my hands and I got in there and I made me a pan of corn and the biscuits. I had them cooked when she come in. Or when she, I don't know why she said it, but she said, well, don't tell your dad that you baked them. I don't know why she thought that he wouldn't eat them. But then after I cooked them, well, they was good or better than hers. And then she told him, well, he said, it was all right. He, he liked them, you know. But I don't know why she didn't want to tell him because she's afraid he wouldn't eat them or something. I was That's just kind of worried. Yeah, I was just But anyway, I baked it. My you biscuits. Baked your biscuits, you just did it, and then you just kind of. And then, then after her sister married, after she married, well, she'd have, oh, every month or so, she'd have a spell, and I'd have to stay two or three days with her. She'd had fainting spells, and I don't know what, and I'd have to stay with her. 
I had to go with her, but of course I got to go to the kitchen. I got to do all my cooking in, you know, because she knowed how to, she'd already learned how to cook. And she she helped me then to cook. Well, how did your sisters learn to cook? Well, I guess uh, Mamma Sir and them learned her how. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, Mom never would, you know, she just, I don't know why she didn't teach us. Yeah. She just afraid Dad wouldn't eat it or something. I don't know. That was it. That's something else. Did she ever whoop you? Whoop me? I guess so. It was twitches. Yeah? She'd get a switch and she'd strike our legs. We'd have stripes all over us. <laughs> <laughs> what church did y'all go to? Well, we didn't go to any of the, just uh, when the preacher would come in there and have it was uh, bush harbors, you know. And then uh, after uh, Jake and Eula moved up there, we would have prayer meeting every Saturday, every Wednesday and Saturday night, uh -huh. Sunday night. We'd have prayer meeting, you know. We all did. That's the only time we ever went to, only church we went to. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't too easy to get well, to no, church well, anyway. No, it wasn't well, a real well, church, well, church nearby. For miles. We'd just read and just miles read your Bible. Just miles from church. Just miles from church. Okay. So we didn't get to go. Uh, did you want a boy or a girl? Oh, I don't know. It didn't make a difference. Didn't make difference. Didn't, yeah. didn't make no difference. Just so it was all right. Okay. Some thing I Were said. you scared? Not really. Not really. Cause everybody else had babies. So. Well, when when um, Carol was born, <coughs> we uh, we first moved the bungalow, and then uh, uh, we moved the bungalow down on the branch in a little four room house. And Dad and Mom moved from the big house at Durham's, up to the bungalow where we lived. And then Mr. Durham that owned all the farms and everything, he moved from Hardsburg out in the main house. So we moved down on, we was living down on the branch, we call it, little three-room house. Okay. So when Carol was born. Yeah. And of course, we, I never did go to a doctor, never went to a doctor's, nothing. And, uh, and uh, when a little old woman, they called her midwife. Uh -huh. She was a color, old colored woman, a light bill they called her. Well, she was the one to come over her and delivered Carol. So that's what, and boy, it cost a whole lot, so. Well, it did. Five dollars. Five dollars. <laughs> she charged five dollars. <laughs> that's pretty good money. <laughs> so that, that's how Well, you just stood and just stayed with, he just stayed right there and never had a doctor look at him. No, now. never did go to a doctor. Yeah. Never, never, never did see a doctor. And the only thing, and then when uh, Floyd was born, he didn't have no doctor. That was a curse. Still, still had the same old woman, old Aunt Beulah. And uh, Buck's sister, Lucy, uh, before Carol was born, she was 12 years old, but she come in to live with us. But she stayed with me and, and took care of things. Helped, take, helped Buck take care of things. Of course, back then, you had to stay in the bed nine days. Well, the, and, well it, it was no use of it, but now they'll send you home the next day. Yeah. But now then, uh, they'd have you just supposed to be at nine days. It was just a thing. Yeah, you know. just the way the old time, you see. That's yeah. the way all the rest of them do. Um. And then when Carol was born, and then Floyd, and then Gilbert was the first one we had a doctor with. Uh, Dr. Joe Matthews. Uh, just because he was there, or available. Yeah, no, they, there was no other, there was no other midwife in Franco. He moved to, from Fort Kirk or to Westview, you see, and they oh, didn't okay. have no. Didn't have no midwife then, so we had to have the doctor. Right, Doctor McDaniel's. Huh? Or what was his name again? Oh, Joe Matthews. Matthews. Joe Matthews. Joe Matthews. Was well, that same for the rest he, of them then, he, or? He lived hard, and he was one delivered the rest of the kids. Okay. And then, of course, uh, well, Stanley was born before the doctor got there, and Shirley was born a long time before the doctor got there. <laughs> so Mamma, she took care of things till. Oh, the doctor got there. Yeah, well, D.B. Wheeler was the first to uh, rock mom. Huh? So D.B. Wheeler was the first one to rock mom no, in the rocking chair. No, it was uh, uh, old Miss Smiley. Old Miss Smiley. Uh, D.B. Wheeler was going to come down there to be with me, but it rained the night before and got the creek up, and she couldn't get got the water over the walk, and she couldn't get across. Mm -hmm. So he had to go to he had to walk a oh, mile or more now, I guess, to to call the doctor. And uh, the doctor, of course, it rained, and the doctor come to, to, to see me in his car. And then uh, uh, the only priest I played was, he had an old Model T Ford, a Model T. And uh, so he got, he put the preacher in, in the, I mean the preacher, the doctor in the, the car. And he said, well, and I said, we'll start. And had to go down through like a road, down through a field, you know, just an old muddy road. He said, well, I said, I don't know. I said, well, try it. 
So when I get there, the part of it, and the doctor said, he said, well, if the part gets there, I'll be hanging on, he said. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he was. And he charged $15 for, for uh, Gilbert, or come to see Gilbert. And when Gilbert was born, Stanley and Paul, when they was all born, he charged 15 Well, and he had to do all of that. Back then, he didn't, we could come right to our house, like, you know, uh -huh. with the other car. But uh, then, uh, Shirley was already born. He just charged twelve dollars, <laughs> and he had already he had already uh, retired, but he wasn't going to stop him, for, you know, for his doctrine. Mm -hmm. But he, I had already gone to see him about nine months before. Then we'd have to actually found out you had to go to the doctor's office, and he'd check your blood. Had to had check your blood. Now that's the only the only time I was ever to see the doctor till I never did see him more till 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 he comes see to take care of Shirley. So that's what it was. Mm -hmm. We had other five kids, and I was going to name the is it Shirley May, or let's see, Shirley and Shirley. What was the other name? I thought Shirley May or Linda May or some other I, some other kind of May. I can't remember now. I'm so forgetful. But anyway, Buck went in the, in the kitchen and where the kids were at, and uh, asked him. Asked Carl, of course, he was uh, ten years old. And he asked Carol uh, what name did he want to name his little sister, you know. Well, he said Shirley May. He liked that name, Shirley May. Well, he so, named her. Yeah. yeah. How did you get uh, Carol's name? Carol. Oh, I don't remember now. Of course, that Vincent was named after his dad. Uh -huh. And Carol was a, one of Mom's cousins had a little boy named Carol. I think that's the way I got started his little name. Okay. That's only Carol, only Carol and Oda. Okay. What well, about uh, Gilbert? Or Floyd, I guess I should say Floyd. next. Yeah. Floyd, yeah. is he named yeah. after anybody? Well, for, uh, for the Floyd, I don't remember how I got Floyd's okay. name, but the, the Elsie was named after Elsie Anderson. I was wondering if that's... Yeah, that was one of his names after Elsie. And then Gilbert Edward was... Uh, Edward was after Buck's Papa dad. Papa Buck, or Papa, Papa, Papa Anthony, Ed. Yeah, Papa Ed. And then uh, Stanley. Well, Stanley was uh, another summer kin to Ma. I don't know how it was. Some, so she kind of come, yeah, came up with it. And, like and, Lee. and then Stanley uh, Lee. I just put the Lee on it. And then Paul. Well, Paul really was named after Paul Stennett. That's all Paul I can remember of. Huh. You just remember Paul Stennett's name? So why not Paul, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Wendell? Uh, Wendell. Oh, Buck worked with a man named Wendell, I think, when he worked on WPA. I believe that's where I got it. I don't, don't remember now. I'm so forgetful. I'm well, yeah. I can't well, remember things like I used to. It's been a while. To. I can't remember it. Okay. Do you remember when, uh, uh, when the war started? Back when, uh, uh, that Pearl Harbor? No. You don't remember what you were doing when you heard about that? I didn't hardly ever hear anything. Didn't have no way to find didn't out. Didn't have a radio, did you? Yeah, well, Lord, no, yeah. no radio or nothing. We didn't have, we didn't find out nothing. Maybe we never get to go anywhere, nothing but the store. And then you finally find out. Well, we're at war with Germany. Yeah, and oh, yeah. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> that was something else. What about when you had to start using ration stamps? They just send them to you in the mail, and the, yeah. or how'd you know you had to use them? Well, yeah, you had to use them, and I've still got them, but we didn't use You've seen them. Yeah, yeah, you've got them. I get him and let him taste his thing. Okay. He will. If he will. I don't know why she didn't teach us. Yeah. She just afraid Dad wouldn't eat it or something. I don't know. Well, I guess so. Just so that's, he's, that's what, yeah. it was her job to cook for him. She yeah. was going to do it. Yeah, I guess that's the way too. she looked at it. That was, that was it. That's something else. Did she ever whoop you? Whoop me? I guess so. It was twitches? Yeah. She'd get a switch and she'd strike her legs. We'd have stripes all over us. <laughs> <laughs> what church did y'all go to? Well, we didn't go to any. Of the, just uh, when the preacher would come in early, and have there was uh, bush harvest, you know. 
And then after uh, Jake and Eula moved up there, we would have prayer meeting every Saturday, every Wednesday and Saturday night, mm -hmm. Sunday night. We'd have prayer meeting. You know, we all get. That's the only time we ever went to, only church we went to. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't too easy to get well, to church no, anyway. Well, it wasn't well, a real well, church well, nearby. Church for miles. We'd just read and just miles read your Bible. Just miles from churches. Miles from churches. Okay. So we didn't get to go. Okay. So that's enough now to go, go somewhere else, somebody else do something. Well, I, I want to hear about, uh, so when did you find out you were going to have your first baby? It was a little bit long, I guess, yeah. or so, and you realized you are going to... And uh, did you want a boy or a girl? Oh, I don't know. It didn't make a difference. Didn't make them long as it was healthy. Didn't, didn't make no difference. Just so it was all right. Okay. The thing I Were said. you scared? Not really. Not really? Because everybody else had babies. So. Well, when when um, Carol was born, <coughs> we uh, we first moved the bungalow. And then uh, uh, we moved the bungalow down on a branch in a little four-room house. And Dad and Mom moved from the big house at Durham's to the bungalow where we lived. And then Mr. Durham that owned all the farms and everything, he moved from Hardsburg out in the main house. So we moved down on, we was living down on a branch, we called it, little three-room house. Okay. So I went to Carol was born. Mm. And of course, we, I never did go to a doctor, never went to a doctor, nothing. And, uh, and uh, when a little old woman, they called a midwife. She was a color, old colored woman, a white bugle, they called her. Well, she was the one to come over there and delivered Carol. So that's what, and boy, it cost a whole lot, so. It cost oh, it did. $5. $5. She charged $5. <laughs> that's pretty good money. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's how. Well, you just, uh, just stayed with, he just stayed right there and never had a doctor look at him now. No, never did go to a doctor. Yeah. Never, never, never did see a doctor. And the only thing, and then when uh, Floyd was born, he didn't have no doctor. That was a he curve. Still, still had the same old woman, old Aunt Beulah. And uh, Buck's sister, Lucy, uh, before Carol was born, she's 12 years old, well, she come in to live with us. Well, she stayed with me and, and took care of things. Helped, take, helped Buck take care of things. Of course, back then, you had to stay in the bed nine days. Well, and well, it, it wasn't no use of it. But now they'll send you home the next day. Yeah. But now then, uh, they'd have to be supposed to stay in bed nine days. That was just a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just the way that old time you see. It's yeah. the way all of the rest of them do. Um. Then when Carol was born, and then Floyd, and then Gilbert was the first one we had a doctor with. Uh, Doctor Joe Matthews. Uh, just because he was there, or available. No, no they, there was no other, was no other midwife in Franco. We moved to, from Fort Kirk or to Westview, you see, and oh, didn't, have okay. no, didn't have no midwife then, so we had to have the doctor. Right, Dr. McDaniels? Huh? Or what was his name again? Uh, Joe Matthews. Ma Joe Matthews. Joe Matthews. Was that the same for the he rest lived, of them then, he or? Lived, he lived hard, and he was one to live with the rest of the kids. Okay. And then, of course, uh, Stanley was born before the doctor got there, and Shirley was born a long time before the doctor got there. <laughs> so Mamma, she took care of things till, till the doctor got there. Yeah, well, D.B. Wheeler was the first uh, rock mom, huh? Huh? So D.B. Wheeler was the first one to rock mom no, in the rocking chair. No, it was uh, uh, old Miss Smiley. Old Miss Smiley. D.B. Uh, Dee Wheeler was going to come down there to be with me. But it rained the night before and got the creek up, and she couldn't get got the water over the walk, and she couldn't get across. Mm -hmm. So he had to go to he had to walk a whole mile or more now, I guess, to to call the doctor. And uh, the doctor, of course, it rained, and the doctor come to, to, to see me in his car, and then uh, uh, the only priest I played was he had an old Model T Ford, old Model T, and. Uh, so he got he put the preacher in in the I mean the preacher the doctor in the the car and he said well and I said we'll start and had to go down through like a road down through a field you know just an old muddy road he said well I said I don't know I said we'll try it so I might get there with part of it and the doctor said he said well I said the part gets there I'll be hanging on he said <laughs> <laughs> he did he was and he charged fifteen dollars for for uh, Gilbert for coming to see Gilbert and. When Gil was born, Stanley and Paul, when they was all born, he charged 15. Well, and he had to do all of that. Back then, he didn't, we could come right to our house, like, you know, mm -hmm. with the other car. But uh, then, uh, Shirley was already born, he just charged $12. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and he'd already he had already retired, but he was going to stop him, for, you know, for his doctrine. Mm -hmm. But he, I had already gone to see him about nine months before. Then we'd have to actually found out you had to go to the doctor's office and he'd check your blood. Had to, had check your blood. Now that's the only only time I was to ever see the doctor till I never did see him more till 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 he comes see to take care of Shirley. Mm -hmm. So now they give them vitamins and everything, come yeah. in once every other month. Oh, yeah. So that's what it was. Because we had other five kids, and I was going to name the was it Shirley May, or let's see, Shirley and Shirley. What was the other name I thought? Shirley May or Linda May or some other, some other kind of maid. I can't remember now, I'm so forgetful. But anyway, Buck went in the, in the kitchen then where the kids were at. And uh, ask him, asked Carol, of course, he was uh, 10 years old. And he asked Carol uh, what name did he want to name his little sister, you know. Well, he said Shirley May. He liked that name, Shirley May. Well, he so, named her, yeah. yeah. How'd you get uh, Carol's name? Carol. Oh, I don't remember now. Of course, I'd been some same after his dad. Mm -hmm. And Carol was a. Uh, one of Mom's cousins had a little boy named Carol. I think that's the way I got started his little name. Okay. That's only Carol, only Carol I know of. Okay. So what about uh, Gilbert? Or Floyd, I guess I should say Floyd. next. Yeah. Floyd, yeah. is he named yeah. after anybody? Well, for, uh, for the Floyd, I don't remember how I got Floyd's name, but the, the Elsie was named after Elsie Anderson. I was wondering if that's... Yeah, that was one of his names after Elsie. And then Gilbert Edward was... Uh, Edward was after Buck's Papa dad. Buck, or Papa, Papa, Papa Anthony, Ed. Yeah, Papa Ed. And then uh, Stanley. Well, Stanley was uh, another, some akin to Ma. I don't know how it was. Some, so she kind of come, yeah, came up with it. And, like and, Lee. and then... Stanley uh, Lee, I just put the Lee on it. And then Paul. Well, Paul really was named after Paul Stennett. That's all Paul I can remember of. Oh, huh. so you just remember Paul Stennett's name? So why not Paul, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Wendell? Uh, Wendell. Oh, Buck worked with a man named Wendell, I think, when he worked on WPA. I believe that's where I got it. I don't, don't remember now. I'm so forgetful. I'm well, yeah. Just, I can't well, remember things like it used to. It's been a while. To. I can't remember it. Okay. Do you remember when uh, uh, when the war started? Back when uh, uh, that Pearl Harbor. No. You don't remember what you're doing when you heard about that? I can't remember. Well, didn't hardly ever hear anything. Didn't have no way to find didn't out. Didn't have anything. radio, did you? Yeah. Well, Lord, no, yeah. no radio or nothing. We didn't have. We didn't find out nothing. Maybe we never get to go anywhere. Nothing but the store. And then you finally find out, well, we're at war with Germany, yeah, and oh, yeah. okay, yeah, if you say so. <laughs> that was something else. What about when you had to start using ration stamps? They just send them to you in the mail, and the, yeah. or how'd you know you had to use them? Well, yeah, you had to use them, and I've still got them. What we didn't use, you've seen them. Yeah, yeah, you've got them. I get him and let him taste us now. Okay. He will. If he will. Open. I'm go ahead and watch Katie. Katie, y'all want something to eat now? Yeah. Oh, is it time to eat? Yeah. We'll sit. We'll see. I want to see that for a second. What do you want to see? Can I take a picture too? Come on. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and get everybody to eat. Can I get a picture too? We'll see huh? pictures. I pushed it. Oh, it's a video camera. Oh. <laughs> Huh. I can see it. What? Uh huh. Jeez, what? <coughs> <coughs> uh oh, uh oh. Come <coughs> me. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Oh. Excuse me. I got my cat.
Oh, I'm gonna try. Okay, that's fine. Can I try? Can I try? Yeah, I'll see here. Can I do it? I want to see. I want to see it in my neck. I want to see. Want to see it? And they talk. Mom's talking. You have it in their room, don't you? In their bedroom. Let me see it. Okay. Hey, hi. Hi, Katie. You kept Katie high. Can I hold it? I don't know of it. No, it's okay. It's okay. Say hi, Katie. <laughs> well, hello, hi. Katie. How are you today? I'm good. That's good. <laughs> All right, I have enough. I want to see Cody. <laughs> I want to see Cody. Cody. He's walking away. I got him hitting himself in the head. Hi, mommy. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Rick. Hey. <laughs> Pick up a lot with all that stuff. <laughs> That's really it's paused. The latest movie by Katie Sapp. Everybody in the audience threw up. <laughs> sing, sing. Touche. <laughs> 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 Hi. Hi.